Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us again on Kryptonize. I have a returning guest, and uh, we're going to talk about a project of his, and we'll get into that in just a minute. But what we're doing in this kind of new quasi-series uh, is exposing the good, the bad, the ugly, the greatness of tokenization in whatever project it might be, whether it's real estate, equity, debt, artwork, what have you. And today it's going to be real estate. So with that, uh, Lewis, I don't think you need to introduce yourself to, uh, too much, but you know you do have a background in tokenizing real estate projects in Australia. So uh, let's take it from there. What, what project are you, uh, what have you tokenized? And uh, let's just start with the background on that. Yeah, so we, we, well, we're tokenizing um, real estate here in Australia, um, focusing on um, luxury, luxury investment properties. Um, so we, we've tokenized two properties, um, single family home. Um, so one been in Brisbane, so we, I'm based in Brisbane, but also we, we do a lot of um, commuting into the Gold Coast, which is uh, the, sunny, the sunny beaches of the Gold Coast, uh, which is sort of down south from us, 100 kilometers down south from us, from Brisbane. So we tokenize our second property there called the Dolphin property, the Brick Dolphin. Um, in terms of its um, exact name, token name. But um, so again, we, we, we tokenized that property uh, sort of late last year, the Dolphin property. And, um, and it was a lot of learning. So we, we took from it, from given obviously always learning um, from the first one to the second one. And, and I think there's some great um, some learnings in terms of people that are looking at tokenizing and, and even obviously in terms of people who are looking to invest in tokenized real estate. So yeah. All right. And uh, you've got one in particular that we want to talk about called the Dolphin, right? Yes. And, and could you guys just give us a background of that project and why either you or somebody else decided to tokenize it? Yeah, look, in terms of you know, our, our business at BrickBC is to tokenize real estate properties. So that, that is our business. So our, our objective is to, to do 20, 20, each, 20, each month, uh, 20 each year, should I say. Um, so these are just the first cats off the ranks. And uh, the Dolphin property, uh, again, the very, the, the very similar features that the type of properties we take. And I said, Dolphin property is a, yeah, a $2.6 million total cost, um, US dollars. I you know, always like to make sure we we're talk, talking on the same currency. So when I talk about dollars, it's always US dollars. <laughs> so, uh, so that's a total cost of $2.6 million. So we tokenize it. We basically it's uh, 40,000 tokens that make up that series. And anybody from anywhere in the world can actually buy on our platform tokens in the, in that property token series. Um, so we, we see uh, again why why do we tokenize? I mean, we've been doing I've been doing real estate as a, myself, my family for you know about thirty years investing in property. So uh, again, uh, uh, it was time to take the journey to um, yeah. Obviously, with with banks continuing to be challenging, the old system of buying yeah. traditional real estate for the everyday person is challenging. So we thought, why don't we get people on a journey with us? And, uh, and and be able to benefit from the you know what real estate brings, but now anybody can have access to it. That you know obviously has been hard in traditional real estate. So the dolphin property, as I said, the second property, and and, and having the ability to, to buy you know for as little as eighty dollars into a token, um, it starts um, you know whether you're from a developing country, developed country, anywhere in the world, you can start your journey in real estate um, through this tokenizer real estate. Did you tokenize this property to raise money or had you already bought the property and, and the, you just wanted to provide uh, equity for yourself or for the, for the investors? Yeah, so all properties that we tokenize, so basically we have an, an arrangement with the, with the seller, whether you know, this one, the Dolphin, is actually is a, is a build developer. So we have agreed on the price. So basically once all tokens are sold, we, we sell, sell on the property. So we, <clears throat> we, we basically... The hundred percent of the property is owned by token holders. So obviously we have share a, a, a part in it as ourselves, but um, so there's no debt involved at all. So it's basically hundred percent owned by token holders. Um, so there's no worrying need to worry in terms of interest rates and all that stuff that goes with obviously having debt in the mix. It's all um, debt free. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's interesting. So so you raise money, you have an agreement with the seller, you issue tokens. And and I know that you probably haven't uh, liquidated this property yet, but what are the expected benefits? Why why would a developer, an owner, uh, anyone do it this way as opposed to the traditional way? Well, in terms of, um, I, I'm, I'm fortunate that obviously with the, the, the contacts I've built over the years with the build developers in, in the construction space. So basically, I, I said I want that property. They've got, they've got a lot of, actually this particular um um, houseworks, they've got a, a series of 15 properties over the next 18 months. 
that they're building and selling. So, and I just I want that one there. And um, so from Mars, it's having those relationships with people and to, to be able to grab those. Um, from, from, the, from, a, from a developed perspective, why aren't they doing it themselves? Um, well, it's, um, I mean, in his scenario, he, he'd, um, he's, he'd rather focus on, on the traditional way because he can sell the properties. Yeah, you know, regardless, because here in Southeast Queensland, we've got some good, um, some good uh, uh, environment in terms of what's happening in property, um, and, and especially over the next ten years with our Olympics here in 2032, Brisbane Olympics. So we've got a lot in terms of migration, Olympics. So we've got a lot. Of, so we, we're expecting these properties to go four times its value from from last year in terms of our forecasting, and that's been conservative. So as a developer, from his perspective, that the who we buy this, they can sell the property regardless. Um, and they're just going to keep focus on the traditional model, but I think any sort of any any developer that's looking sort of do, you know, to do your commercial real estate property, we start talking about your sort of your your five story, you know, thirty units and plus. I think in that space, it provides a great um, a great case scenario to tokenize real estate because, you know, we all know dealing with banks is challenging. We start talking about sort of borrowing thirty million, fifty million, eighty million. It starts getting challenging. So I think from a from that perspective, I think it's a great case study for any developer to consider if they're doing those sort of projects. Um, again, in terms of single family homes, available like this one here, he's just doing single family homes and building and selling straight away. It's probably a hard hard a hard case for him to why would he do it when his model's working? But definitely in terms of a developers doing the sort of the bigger end stuff, it definitely uh, there's a case for it. Yeah. Uh, I, I see the case is pretty clear for me, especially uh, with the liquidity you're giving your LPs, the transparency, uh, all of the things can be done mostly on chain, which frees up a, a lot of uh, mm-hmm. paperwork. Uh, so I, it, there's quite a few things. What what I think is missing, and, and we as an industry have to figure this out, is how to give, because they have to spend money to set this up, how to get them more money at the end of the day. This is the developer or the owner than they would if they want a traditional process. Yes, it helps ELP. It helps everybody. I guess it helps the developer or the owner because of the transparency and the way that they can uh, just uh, send information out via the blockchain, via wallets that people have. That, that That's cool. And there's a lot less check writing. But um, you know, there's got to be a way that they can make more more money as a result of tokenizing. Then this thing is going to catch on like, like, like wildfire. OK, so. Um, I, I do want to thank you for sharing this use case. Is there anything else, if somebody's watching this, they should know um, when deciding to tokenize or not? Is there a fine line, hey, tokenize this, don't tokenize that? I know you talked about single-family residences. But, um, yeah, what, you're talking to, to directly to owners and developers. What do you tell them? Well, in terms of, like, if, if you look at um, just doing um, one-soft property, uh, it's because it's, it's, it, the costs involved and obviously the research it goes and the consultants and so forth, it's not viable to just do it once off. I think if you're going to do it, you've got to do it as part of your whole business model. As a developer, it has to be part of your or your business model that you do it year after year using this as um, definitely as one of the means how you're actually funding your projects. Because um, I actually had someone the other day ask me, oh, can I, I've got this property, can I tokenize, um, you know, I want to get equity out of it, tokenize 25% of it. Said so, no. This, this is not. This is not a one-off situation. This is got to be a business that's going to be continued because obviously the costs involved. But look, in terms of a developer that's looking at looking at tokenizing, uh, again, it's it's not easy because at the end of the day, it's um, yeah, you, you, one you got to sort of choose one in terms of what blockchain you're going to tokenize in terms of getting your consultants around you because that's important, especially at the initial phase. Um, like as you, as, you, as you know, we use DigiShares in terms of who created our platform to tokenize our properties. So again, talking, having those early discussions with people like that. Um, but in terms of, um, you have to build community. You, you got to be involved to also um, educate because, as as you know, Mark, in terms of just because somebody trades crypto. Uh, doesn't mean it's a, they're going to transition to tokenize real estate. So right. it requires a lot of learnings. We've obviously we've been doing that what, for two years in terms of educating, providing what is tokenized real estate. And our first point of call was trying to educate um, people who actually invest in crypto because they understand blockchain, they understand the fundamentals of it, um, which comes with, with its other in terms of how to, well, how do you convince somebody who's making you know, 10, 10x and 20x, 100x on cryptos to come and put some money there on, on tokenized real estate. So that's the challenging. 
but the conversation is an easy conversation. We try and educate somebody who already knows about blockchain. So again, it's that's you've got to be prepared to put in the time to educate and provide you know, content and and, and getting getting onto people that are providing some great content and sharing their content like like you are, Mark, and like uh, SDM markets are doing. So people like that that uh, we all as a collectively continue to educate that space. So it's um, it's not easy because else everybody else would be doing it. But, but if if you're a developer that's looking to use that as part of your business model as a, as a proper developer, there's certainly rewards in terms of you, you know, you know, make this part of your long journey in terms of what you're doing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. I mean, they, you should either tokenize your entire business or tokenize uh, a portfolio. Um, then I could see, you know, if you, if, you, if you got a portfolio of properties in an LLC here in the States and you tokenize that, then – it's. I think you can leave some tokens left over for yourself in order to profit even more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this isn't legal advice. No. It's not legal advice. But um, what I've seen, uh, some of these developers are moving more towards that model so they can keep some tokens for themselves yeah. and not just what percent they own of the property because it's a portfolio or because it's their business. Now it's more of an equity situation. So yeah. interesting. Yeah. We'll have to see how it all uh, develops. Yeah. Uh, but with that, uh, Lewis, I, 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 I want to... Thank you for being on the show again. Thank you for talking about your project, The Dolphin, and um, look forward to uh, staying in touch with Always you. Always a pleasure, Mark. Always a pleasure. You take care. Hello, Kryptonized fans. I've got a special token that I'm recommending for you. You've been following this show. We don't play any games. We'll tell you what tokens we like, what we don't. We have guests that come on and try to convince us. And you know the drill. But this one's a sure winner. And that is Tetragar.